Welcome to the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay. This is your positive path for spiritual living. Time. The man goes back to fishing, and then, you know, the frog says, hello, are you listening? He picks up the frog, and he puts the frog in his pocket. So he finishes his fishing, and he goes home. And then this frog is still just talking in his pocket. He gets home, and he takes the frog out. And he looks at the frog, and the frog said, I told you, all you need to do is kiss me, and I'll turn into a beautiful bride that you could have with you everywhere and always for the rest of your days. And the man said, listen, I'm 85 years old. He says, I'd really just rather have the talking frog. Okay, so there we have it. Got that over with. But the idea is what I want to say to you out of that story. It reminds me that each one of us must find our own way of experiencing and expressing and enjoying and appreciating what is happiness and joy for us. Yes? Say yes. Nod your head so I know that you're with me. Each one of us must come into an awareness of what it is that that brings us joy, that brings us a sense of happiness, that feels like it is uniquely our experience. And what I like to think about when I feel joy is makes me all creamy inside, that thing. But once we discover what that is, and that's a lifelong journey, once we discover what that is, we come to an awareness and know that we, it is ours to do. It's up to us to then choose it. Choose to live it. Choose to own it. Choose to experience. Choose to express it. Choose to love it and make it a part of life. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what comes to me is a, a, a Bible story that says, you know, even in the midst of challenging times, difficult times, sh- struggles, whatever they are, what's ever going on in our life, that there is an opportunity, even in the midst of whatever's going on, there's an opportunity for us to own what, what brings us joy and then choose it, select it for ourselves. And I think it's just part of the human condition, learning that. But there's a story in the 32nd chapter of the book of Genesis. And it's a story about uh, Jacob, if you may know, the story of Jacob and Esau. And, and, you know, family stuff, the two brothers, you know, got in trouble together. And, you know, Jacob did some stuff he shouldn't have done. There's always one of them, right? Right did something he shouldn't have done and it caused a rift between he and his brother. They were separated for many years. So now Jacob, many years later, has the awakening and the awareness he wants to heal with his family. Anybody, everyone, heal with their family. Come on, say it. Heal with, do like this. Heal with your family. Oh, God. And in the process of doing, he prepares and gets ready to do that. And something happens to Jacob the night before he's supposed to face his brother after many years, after he's done very wrong. And the scripture says he wrestles with a man. Some versions say an angel, some versions say God. He wrestles with a man all night long. Now we know metaphysically that means he was, he was, he had inner, inner stuff going on. He was really wrestling within his own thoughts, his own sense of guilt, really, his own sense of, you know, trying to get it right and figuring out what to do, how to do, um, owning that, that his part in whatever had happened. And the scripture says he wrestled with the man all night long. How many of you have ever stayed up all night long? Wrestling with a problem, with a challenge. Couldn't get to sleep, tossed and turned. Come on, I know, I know more than that. Yeah, thank you. And then the scripture says, as the, the man said, listen, it's almost daybreak. Let's just stop this. And then Jacob grabs the man tight and he says the famous part in this story. And he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 
Can you imagine saying to your greatest challenge, I will not let you go until you bless me? And in that moment, there is an awareness and everything shifts. I will not let you go until you bless me. Well, see, in that story, Jacob has chosen joy even in the midst of a struggle. And I dare say to you that you and I can do the same thing. I dare say to you and I, we must do the same thing. Because you know what I know. Sometimes life is tough. Yeah. And if you walk around with a frown on your face as you work through, through struggles of life, your face will get stuck like that. And then you look angry and mean all the time, even when you're trying to look happy. Do you know people like that? Yeah, and it's not just the facelift that they had, you know. You see some people, if they've had a facelift and their eyebrows are way up there in their face. Another story. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying to you today is you and I must take this opportunity to understand and know that joy is a choice that we make for ourselves. I think joy is part of the spiritual unfolding uh, process that we go through in life because it's about the inner work. It's about discovering and knowing that jo joy is an inside job. Now, here's the thing. We often think joy is an outside job because we think it's maybe the next uh, new car we get, the next promotion we get, the next good-looking partner we get, the next fabulous trip we take. And all those things may bring a smile to our face for a time being, but that doesn't really get to the core of the inner the inner experience that nobody can touch and nobody else is in charge of but self. That's the joy that even when you meet people who are unfriendly, you can still feel good about yourself because that's on them and you get that. That's the joy that you get to know and experience that I am the joyful expression of the presence and the power of God. Yeah, I'm going to have some challenges, but who I am is the joyful expression of the presence and power of, of, of God. And some days, you know, stuff goes awry. Stuff happens. We know this. You know, uh, many years ago, one of the trips that um, uh, my congregation took um, um, many years ago, we went to uh, Mali, West Africa. Actually, a couple of people are here today who went on that trip with us. And we went there on a, a trip to build a well in Mali because there was a, a, a village that we built the well in. They, there was just no clean water. And so we went there to build a well. We took supplies. We took um, uh, personal items for, for children and books and all that kind of stuff for children. I mean, it was a wonderful trip. But one of the things I learned from that experience, Mali is one of the poorest countries in the world. And I got to tell you, I never saw happier people. <laughs> Go figure. Smiles like you wouldn't believe and a willingness to share whatever they had without, you know, fear of that, that they could give themselves away or give what little possessions they have to give away. They were giving us gifts. Here, here's beautiful material. Take it with you and make a dress or a blouse. Here, and I have this bread. Break, break, break this bread with me. Smiling and laughing and singing and dancing. And some people would say, wait a minute. Do you realize you're one of the poorest countries in the world? Like what? That doesn't change the fact that who's in charge of your joy, that appreciation for life itself has nothing to do with how much stuff you own because somebody once is, has told me over and over again, you can't take all that stuff with you when you leave anyway. You can't I mean, you make, try to stuff some stuff in the coffin if you're going that way. You can try to put some stuff in there. You know, if you're getting cremated, they can burn some stuff in there with you. It ain't the same. You're not going to enjoy it, I promise you. 
So learning that and experiencing that. So that joy becomes this, this awareness that it's an inside job. If we are experiencing joy, we can know that we have touched the very spirit of God that is within. Now, a couple things I got to say to you. I know that we are living in times that are very challenging to us. I mean, if you watch the news, I mean, it is heartbreaking many days, which is why I have to pace myself in watching the news. I have to do a certain amount of it because I need to know what's going on and so I can make conscious decisions about the work that I'm doing and where I'm going and all of that kind of stuff, just like you do. But I also have learned that I can't get stuck in that because if I do, it, 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 it doesn't allow me to have that truest expression of holding the consciousness and the space of faith for everybody on the planet. I'll get sucked into the outer appearance of what's happening. So I have to do it in bits and pieces. I don't know how you do it, but you have to figure out how you do that so you're not feeling down all the time. Because if you have a steady diet of news, you will feel down all the time. Yes? Yes. So how in the midst of this do you choose joy with all the stuff that's going on? I mean, if we wanted to have a, a pity party and a, and a, a um, I can't say that word. I'm thinking, what's the other way to say that? A complaining session. Ah, that's it. A complaining session. Yeah, that's it. That's the word. A complaining session. We could be here all afternoon and miss the fun festivities. But that's not what our role is here today. I said, no matter what's going on, this sense of joy talks about this. So here's what happens. You and I, we learn how to navigate the struggles, the challenges, the difficulties of life by finding bits and pieces of happiness and joy and hope and faith hidden in the crevices of those challenges. And it is through finding those things that we find strength and courage and a resilience that allows us to keep on keeping on. The more stuff you can work through, and I'm serious, the more stuff you can work through. How many of you have worked through some stuff? And when I say stuff, I'm talking about challenges, problems in life, all of that. The more stuff you can work through, and then in the midst of it, find something of joy so that even in the midst of a challenging, whatever the situation is, to sit in a moment and just enjoy the beauty of a flower. Or the sound of, one of the sounds I love hearing, uh, I live with my daughter and my two teenage grandsons. Now, sometimes they fight. Bless their hearts. Oh, God. Pray for them anyway. Um, But one of the sounds that I absolutely love is when they're not fighting and they're having a good time and they're laughing at something. I love to hear the both of them in laughter. It just fills me with joy. And I don't care what I'm experiencing, what I'm thinking about when I hear the two of those two brothers loving each other, playing together, kidding each other, and their laughter just filling the house. (sighs) It's the best thing ever. The smallest things we can find joy in. And nobody can put a price on that, you see. Nobody can put a price on that. And that's what fills up for me. So the question is, what is it for you? Maybe it's music. I don't know about you, but I love music. And and music is really the universal language. You know, I serve on the board of the Parliament of the World's Religions, and it is wonderful. Some of the, the, the various kinds of music that other religions are exposed to, it doesn't sound like the Motowners. But yet there is something in it that still feels like, wow, I I feel that. I get that. I'm not familiar with it. And sometimes even hearing uh, music that has, where they're singing words, and I'm not sure what the words are, but I'm like, I'm I'm in the groove of it. I can enjoy it. I can appreciate it. Music is one of the great healers. Whenever we're feeling down, does that, let me ask a question. Whenever you're feeling down, Do you know a song that can come on the radio or that you can put on that will immediately lift your spirits? Let me see. 
Yes, yes. Like the music we had this morning for me. The music. What else? The sound of laughter, as I said. Connection with people. Oh, my God, the connection with people. This weekend, we, I was up doing the board training up in, uh, we were in Stewart. But uh, the young woman that picked me up from the Bright Line, um, a minister, and I have met her maybe 25 years ago before she was even a minister, and I mentored her for a while. So she picked me up. I spent the night at her house. She took me out. She says, I'd love to take you to my favorite restaurant. Well, see, I'm the kind of person I think, what an honor to take someone, and she was paying the bill, to take someone to your favorite restaurant. I'm thinking, what an honor for you to share that with me. And so she did. She took me to a wonderful restaurant. It was nice and cozy. We sat outdoors. And there was just, it was an experience of just sharing with an old friend we hadn't seen each other in maybe 10, 12 years. We were just catching up. You know, we were laughing. I think we're kind of laughing too loud. A couple of people at some other tables were kind of looking over like, wow, what are you talking about? But it was just the most nourishing moment. You know people like that. That when you're with them and you're laughing and you're exchanging ideas, you're connecting, how good you feel inside, yes. You know people like that. If you don't, you're in the right place because you can meet some. Some in this very room, part of this very congregation. How blessed you are to have that opportunity. Connection with people. You know, they're saying one of the most challenging things for, at least particularly in the United States, is the growing sense of loneliness. Oh. Depression and suicide. You know, we're, we're, we're beings that need connection. Human beings, we need each other. We need each other. And that's part of what nourishes us when we have good relationships. Relationships and friendships and connections we're willing to work on. So you get a little miffed at your friend because, you know, they invited the other friend to the movies and they didn't invite you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You get a little miffed at that. But then you get over it because you're friends. Right? And you continue the relationship and you continue to grow. We're social beings, and if we haven't figured that out yet, that's a thing to figure out quick and start working on getting some friends, making some connections with some folks that you can just sit and have a cup of tea with and exchange ideas. And maybe even just, I, I met this um, couple recently, and they said, oh, we've been married for 55 years, and, she's, and, and she was talking more than he was talking. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, and, and she said, it's really beautiful that our relationship, we can sit together and in silence and not feel the need to talk, but still feel so connected. We're connected. We feel that. And it nourishes our relationship. We need connection. So own it. And then start making conscious effort to surround ourselves with people. People who can love us and we can love and we can support each other and grow together and make connections together. So if you don't have a bunch of friends, great. This is the right place to make friends. Is that right, Sam? Sam will be your friend, right? See, there she is right there. So you got one friend already. See, went to church and made a new friend. There you go. But I lastly say to you then the act of service. The act of service. Uh, finding some cause that means something to you, a cause that means something to you. Um, one of the people that I serve with on the parliament's board, um, a young man who grew up in India, and he talks about a time when there was uh, war in his in his. Uh, country in his the village where he lived 
And he talks about hiding and being afraid as a young boy. And he said that in that moment, he sort of made this vow that if I ever get out of this experience, I'm going to do something good in the world where people don't have to be afraid, where there's war. He's actually now the president of the parliament of the world's religions. Find something that is a cause for you. I'm sure you can volunteer right in this, in this community. I'm sure you can. But whatever it is, and give of yourself to it, to give that rich meaning to your life. Because in that serving, you will find joy. I actually have a few, just a few brochures on one of the projects that I'm working with, with the parliament. It's called the Global Ethic. And the Global Ethic has five uh, directives that have been um, wonderfully collaborated on by many of the world's religions and saying, if we could create a world where there is nonviolence, where there is uh, just economic order, where people and leaders and individuals speak truth rather than fabricate stories that hurt and harm people. Number four, if there is gender equality for, for, for all. And then number five, if we take care of this loving place we get to live on called planet Earth. If we could do those five things, wow! Do you feel the energy of transformation that that would bring for all of us? So there's a couple of brochures back there somewhere. If you want to pick up one of those brochures and find out more about that, please do. But that's how I serve, and that gives my heart great joy to be a part of something bigger than myself because I want to leave the world better than when I came. I just had breakfast over at the, where I was staying at the Marriott over here. Um, thank you so much for putting me up there last night. Um, and I had breakfast there this morning. And then after I was done, I was just kind of took my napkin. It was kind of cleaning off the table. And then the lady came, oh, no, 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 you don't have to do that. I was like, yes, I do. Because I want to leave this, this table better than I found it. Or at least no less than. I don't want to leave my crumbs for somebody else. But that's an attitude, do you see? That's the joy that I get to feel like wherever I go and in all things that I do, just maybe I'm leaving a little joy for somebody. They don't have to know my name. I'm just leaving a little joy. So here's the challenge for you this week. Wherever you go, I want you to just have, have a conscious mental attitude that wherever you go this week, leave a little joy. Huh, what would that be like? And be creative. Don't just, you know, say joy. Leave a little joy. Leave an extra tip. Say something really kind to someone out of the blue. I love doing that when people really aren't expecting it. And you say something really kind and then they go, oh, that's so nice. I'm so glad like that. Well, however you experience it. So that's your challenge this week. Every day, every day for the next seven days, think of it. Spread joy. Be creative. Do something maybe even different you've never done before. Maybe go up and introduce yourself to a total stranger and then say, just wanted to introduce myself, wanted to meet you because I'm just out looking to spread joy and I just want you to know, I hope you have a great day. They might think you're a little kooky at first, but I bet you this, they'll appreciate it and you'll feel better because that's how we make a difference in the world. One smile, one connection, one good deed, many good thoughts, much laughter, good friendships, serving. One day at a time, one person at a time, until it spreads across the globe. And we all get to experience it. And then our children and our children's children get to have a place where they can say, ah, what a wonderful world. In spite of all the challenges, we got stuff to work on. But you can't solve those with a frown on your face and hate in your heart. It's got to be through love and through joy and our willingness to spread joy. So repeat after me. 
I'm here to spread joy everywhere I go and in everything I do. I'm willing to live my joy. I'm willing to be my joy. Oh, heck, I am joy. Okay, say that part. Oh, heck, I am joy. Oh, come on, people. I would need you to really own this or I can't get off this stage. Oh, heck, I am joy. Yes, God bless you. And thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for visiting our YouTube channel. We post new videos every week to keep you positive, present, and inspired to your divinity. Please click on the subscribe button below and also that notification bell. Remember to share this with your friends and your family, those that you know will be inspired just like you have been. And always remember that we love you, that we bless you, that we behold the Christ in you, and we see you doing great things. Thanks and take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay, a spiritual community located in Miami, Florida. Unity on the Bay is supported by the generosity of its community. If you'd like to make a donation or learn more about Unity on the Bay, please visit unityonthebay.org. You can also follow Unity on the Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for even more positive spiritual inspiration. Until next time, thanks for listening and many blessings. Namaste.